Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is March 10th of 2019. And I know because it tells me when I need to, the day for taking the medication. I hope you know what time it is because, see, daylight savings time either went into existence or whatever. Because it's uh, 7.24 a.m. now. Sunday. I remember working at a hospital, and I worked there for 11 years, and every, for years and years, five or six years, I was always on duty for <coughs> the time changes. So I'd have to go through the hospital and change a whole bunch of the clocks. Didn't have to change them all, but it, there were, it was important that, you know, like the one in the emergency room or two in the emergency room and stuff like that. And plant operations could take care of, you know, others, but I took care of the ones that were important. And uh, it was <laughs> doing the activity sheet that you had to do, you know, had to write, they wanted you to write down, you know, what you were doing like every 15 minutes or whatever. Uh, it became confusing when, let's see, I'd come in be doing my activity sheet to get up to two o'clock in the morning. You know, I'd log somebody came in and uh, had to restrain them or whatever. And then the time would set back to one o'clock. <laughs> and so, you know, you'd be looking at my activity sheet. And what in the heck, you know? Uh, what was sort of funny, well, so would this be fallback time or jump fall? I don't know. Anyway, um, too confusing for me. Uh, I had to unlock the hospital at 5 a.m. And I would always, of course, do it a little bit before 5 a.m. because you couldn't unlock. Well, this was a small hospital. You could, there was like four or five doors, maybe a little more that had to be unlocked, you know, outside doors. Whatever. So you couldn't unlock all exactly at 5, you know, so you had to start a little bit early to in order that everything was unlocked at 5. Like I said, I've been doing this for years, and uh, there were several employees who wanted to park in the front parking lot, and I didn't really care. They should be parking in, in the back in the employees' parking lot, but it was not a situation at that hospital. In fact, later on, the hospital, <laughs> people would drive down the highway and look over, and there wouldn't be any hardly any vehicles at the, that they could see at the hospital. And so actually the hospital and, you know, administration asked employees, you know, in the day shift, please park out in the front parking lot so people will see that we have cars here and know we're open or whatever. But anyway, so uh, I'm in the emergency room or whatever, and the ER doorbell rings. Bing, 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 too. That pissed me off when somebody, you know, and there's a doorbell, at the ER doorbell, and because the hospital was locked at night. And, you know, they would ding, 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 and there's a few times I went over and chewed some people's asses out. And, uh, but, so, ding, 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 ding at uh, 4 a.m., so I go over to the door, and it's uh, an employee, female employee of the hospital who I really very wor very rarely saw her because I she always parked in the front parking lot and the door was always unlocked and she, I went home about 6 a.m. But anyway, so I unlocked the door, you know, I let her in and then she just, I'm, you know, just start. You should be doing, I forget, I can't remember, you know, exactly what she was, you should be doing your job, what are you here for if you're not doing your job, you're supposed, you know you're supposed to unlock that door at 5 o'clock in the morning, you know, so I just walked with her, walked with her, walked the way down to, you know, went right beside her, and she's, I'm just not saying anything, just letting her, oh, you, you know, and we get down into her department, you know, her, the business office where she worked and everything, and I said, uh, uh, do me a favor, what time is it? And she says, you know, it's 5 a.m. And I said, 
No, they changed the time last night. Uh, it's now 4 a.m. You're here an hour early. She didn't say. You know, she did not say anything. But that's that's the way some people were. I worked at another hospital 20 years before that or whatever. And the first hospital that I worked at, and it was in the worst part of Kansas City, Missouri. And I can say that because I used to live, I lived there for years. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid and, and for after I grew up a little bit. Um, uh, let's see, I'm sidetracked myself with one of my comments. Talking about daylight savings time, and I do not remember what tangent I was going to go off on. Anyway, I'm still using my 4K monitor all by itself, and it's working out okay. Doesn't work out okay when I have another monitor of a different resolution, you know, next to it. Because I wish I could. Well, like I said, I thought about buying another 4K monitor and having them side by side. Then I could drag stuff back and forth. But anyway, this is working out okay. I uh, told you the other day, you know, Windows new builds or whatever, the cutting edge or whatever, don't, <laughs> don't do that. Take my advice because I've done it a lot over the years. And it always bites you in the ass. But uh, I just installed, I think I had version, the new build, Windows 10 new build. I think I had 18531. 18531, and I don't see it written down over there. Anyway, I now have, I just installed 18353. And... Uh, now, a couple bills back, I showed you that when I uh, would go over and click here, and uh, this would not pop up. You know, that the, the uh, menu would not, what do they call it? What do they call that? Well, anyway, it wouldn't work until they did the, until they did the, bill before this but now of course it worked then and it now it it works in this bill except i noticed this that uh, click here go to start oh the start menu is what it's called before you know okay now go to apps oh, okay it didn't crash this time uh, it was, it was crashing, and what I had to do was uh, go to it, go to it, but I couldn't click on uh, apps. Well, let me try that again. See if it'll go. When I go to default apps, see if it crashes. No, it does not. Okay. So I just installed the new build, 18353. No major increases or uh, things. They're mainly fixing uh, little bugs or whatever and uh, getting it ready for the <coughs> April release that will be for everybody. Um, you know, Microsoft Edge is... Uh, Going to, they're working on it right now, and it's going to be coming out pretty quick. Going to be using the code or whatever for Chrome. So, and really, uh, Microsoft Edge finally, their browser, finally has some nice features. Just a few things that it's uh, lacking or whatever. So when it has the Chrome Chromium code built into it. Uh, it should be nice. So, and they're working very fast to do it. So, uh, let's see what's new. 
Uh, by the way, it says down here, give us feedback when you're using this to keep having things. Once would be enough, you know, but it pops up. Are you, will, you, will you be recommending, you know, uh, like Windows 10 to your friends? Uh, will you be recommending Edge to your friends? How do you like... I remember what I was going to tell you about the other hospital. I worked at this other hospital. I, it was in a bad neighborhood. That's important. We were not allowed, security was not allowed to, well, it was such a bad neighborhood that there were 10 security officers working in the department, which is not very many to staff hospital around the clock, 20, you know. And uh, so we were short staffed because the nuns wanted to send money to the <laughs> diocese, the Pope, their mother house, and all that type of stuff. And they did not want to spend money on security, but they had to because of the neighborhood. There had been rioting in the neighborhood. Uh, I was talking to, uh, doing a little seminar for some local police officers at their police academy, and I was talking about something I brought up, you know, that uh, there was, you know, rioting at a hospital, you know, that I, I worked in the neighborhood, and there was rioting, and a young police officer, really nice one, uh, said, what rioting? And, of course, this was before he was ever born, you know, and I said, well, this is back in the 19, early 1970s. And, uh, but, so anyway, bad neighborhood. We had, out of the 10 security officers, we had uh, Dan Stego was shot, permanently disabled, and about a year later, John Gallegos was shot and killed. So, uh, uh, bad neighborhood. And so security there, I mean, later on, things changed at other hospitals. You know, they wanted security doing everything to justify your, you know. But at that hospital, we were not allowed to jump start cars. We were not allowed to do snow removal. We were not allowed, they just wanted armed and ready. So there was this uh, lady who, and I started out working the day shift. When the second shift officer was shot, Dan Stegel, I went and took his place on the second shift for a while. Then eventually I went to midnight shift for, uh, for a short period of time. Then I went back to day shift. So when I went to second shift, there was an employee. Now we only covered this parking lot where we, would have the two, where we had the two people shot, two security officers shot. We didn't have enough people to uh, cover it on the midnight shift, so at midnight there was no security officer there. So if an employee wanted to go out to that parking lot, it, it was they could go out, but uh, once they went out the one door, you know, it would lock behind them. When they got to the parking lot, there wouldn't be any security there, so they needed to call security, and then we would, you know, escort them out or whatever. But we were not allowed to jump start cars or scrape snow off cars or push cars or anything like that. So anyway, this lady got off at, uh, I think, like 2 a.m. in the morning. She was sort of like data processing. They didn't really have data processing. I'm not sure what she, uh, you know, did, but it was supposed to be like a data processing. But so anyway, I walked, I would walk her out. Now... You know, once she got to her car, I'm sure not just at that place, and I'm not, I hope at that place we didn't do that, but at other places I've seen security officers escort somebody to their car, a, say a female to the car, and she's in the car, and then the o security officer e either drives away in his vehicle or walks away or whatever. No, I mean, I, w had, to, I had to wait until she got, you know, out of the parking lot or whatever, so. So I'd go out there and uh, I'd scrape snow off her ice off her windows. Uh, I'm not sure if I had jump start. I, I would have to have, have to have jumped to start at her car with my own car. I remember once I had to push her car off of ice to get it going or whatever. Anyway, I did that every night that she worked that I worked. You know, I escorted her out. So I went to midnight shift eventually. That was midnight shift. That would have happened on that shift. Uh, 
Yeah. But I did that. So I ended up back on the day shift. And so uh, on the day shift, uh, she came in at, of course, a different time than because of her shift, you know, getting off. And uh, em employees at that time of the day, if you came in, you were allowed to park in the doctor's parking lot, which was right next to the visitor and employee parking lot. You could park there because the doctors were all done by, you know, you didn't need the entire parking lot for the doctors. And uh, so I was back on the day shift and I would see her and she'd pull in and she'd pull in the doctor's parking lot and I'd, I forget her name, you know, say Mary. Hi, Mary. You know, have a good day, blah, blah. And she'd, you know, go on and whatever. So occasionally uh, we'd be, con you know, they'd se notify security outside. Uh, today there's a board of directors meeting or there's a uh, medical staff meeting. All the doctors will be coming in. So uh, don't let anybody park in the doctor's parking lot. So, you know, she comes in. And I had, we had a little sign up there, you know, no parking or whatever. And she just goes ballistic. I'm allowed to park. Why can't I? I said, there's a uh, medical staff meeting. They're coming in. And she just raved and ran, you know, there for weeks or months every night in blizzard weather. And I, you know, and then I come over to, I'm on the day shift. And then the first time, you know, and that's the way people, a lot of people were. Uh. So anyway, here is build 18353. Uh, 22 tips, 16 tips, stay organized, stay safe. I know the one thing that, what in the hell is that? Yeah, sandbox. They made, Windows 10 made improvements with this build in sandbox. I think that has something to do with game playing online. Windows Sandbox. Oops, okay. I saw it, it won't matter to me, but let's see what that is. Oh, they've changed it. Again, they've gone to their damn Bing, you know. You keep, I'm trying to be, uh, you know, I'm trying to give them a break. But then every time they do an install, they set the search engine from Google back to their, oh, okay, I'm going to start cussing, and I don't want to do that, so. Come on, guys, come on, I mean, let's see, Windows, okay, let's see, yeah, 353. Windows 10, build 18353. Uh, sandbox. Windows has released a new Windows 10 19HI preview build for Fast Ring Insiders, and the changes include several refinements for Windows Sandbox. Let's see. Windows Sandbox, a new feature to make your computer secure. Learn how to enable. Okay, Windows Sandbox. Uh, respects the host diagnostic data settings. All other privacy settings are set to their default values. Windows Sandbox internal. Since this is, let's say. What is when? Okay, here we go. This sounds like it. Let's dumb down here a little bit for people like me. Okay, uh, today, which was March 2nd, this is March 10th, allows you to safely run suspected software in a throwaway virtualized sandbox to make saving the main system from the potential threats. Oh, that's a good idea, getting ex Excited about Windows Sandbox features? We too. Here's the discussion. Da -da. What is Windows Sandbox? It is a lightweight virtual machine that builds on the technologies 
used in Windows Container. According to Microsoft, Windows Sandbox has a new technology called Integrated Scheduler, which allows the host to decide when the sandbox runs and provides a temporary desktop environment where Windows administrator can safely test untested software. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. So. Doesn't this look better? This is my channel, but it's not the regular channel page. It's uh, gaming.youtube.com slash channel slash whatever. The link will be below for this, but this looks much better than the, uh, I notice there's no advertising. I'm not sure if that's because I, you know, I, if I'm just seeing it because I pay for the Windows Prime, or not Windows Prime, the uh, YouTube Prime, or, or what, but anyway, this looks nice. Um, so... Let's look at these. Let's try to stay organized. Wait a minute. No, quickly get to stuff. Anyway, this is the browser. Edge. Okay. Stop videos from playing. That sounds good. Improve focus while browsing. Look up meanings as you read. Personalize the theme. One click to fill forms. Mark up PDFs and ebooks. That's a good feature. I haven't used it. Customize with extensions. Definitely there for a while. Edge didn't have any extensions. And I needed like LastPass and ad blocker and what have you. Get to websites from the taskbar. Print what matters. Yeah, I noticed there's an improvement in that. I haven't messed with this. Browse on your phone. Continue on your PC. So, anyway, too many, too many, too many. Okay, that was quickly new stuff. Stop videos from playing. Stay productive. Stop videos from playing. Improve your focus while browsing. See the check mark shows we've already looked at those, but we haven't have them. Read ebooks. Touch your use your touch pad like a touch screen. Mute tabs. Reading made easier. Swipe. Keyboard shortcuts whole bunch of stuff. If you haven't tried Edge, it is much, much better. And it's going to get better as soon as it gets integrated, which apparently they're going to do very quickly with uh, Chrome browser. guess that's it. Oh, well, let me say quickly that, uh, as you may have noticed, I mentioned in the last video that I was going to get the camera down. I think it looks better. I always like <laughs> years ago having a camera way up showing the entire room. Not too good for blogging. But I the tripod and everything I had the camera had to be up and aimed down. And now I the good tripod I have uh taken it off of and I put it on this inexpensive uh short little tiny tripod. So and that actually looks better. You know, you probably should not have the lamp in the background because, well, photography or whatever. Actually, it's working out good because it's almost like I have a white screen behind me. Uh, by the way, this is my printer. This is the lamp. 
This is a whole bunch of cables that I hung on the lamp so I would remember which device that they went to. Now I can't remember if it, which one of these goes to which ham radio or whatever. Um, this pink thing back here behind the roll of toilet paper is a ultrasonic or something or other for going on your face to take off dead dry skin uh, or whatever. I put it there to put on the charger. There's a cologne right there. Some medicine bottles behind it. Down here is my medicine container. And this is a ear thermometer. Actually, I think it works on the head okay, not just the ear, I believe. And this is a uh, thing that needs to be plugged in to recharge. It, that's a brush on the end of there again for, I have extremely dry skin because I do not drink, well, I don't drink water at all. The only way I get water is, uh, this is Coke, but ice has been melted in it. Um, I just, I don't have it, and that's, Probably a much, many of my problems is probably because I don't drink water. I never drink water. I drink Coke. So I really, really like this. The link, like I said, it'll be below. Before I've been giving you the link to, uh, let's go here, giving you the link to uh, YouTube. Oh, I switched keyboards again. Did I tell you that? Even remember why I did it. I had a reason. Oh, and I, let's see, I am going to be, as soon as I get done here, disconnecting the headset and hooking up the uh, blue Yetta. Let's see. Uh, 23. In 23 hours, I've got 31 people that have watched my last video. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, this is, you know, so this is my, what would you call it, the YouTube channel, YouTube homepage or whatever. Uh, doesn't this look much, much better? So the link to this will be below also. Much, much better. Oh, I've got I've had a head cold for the last week. Maybe longer. I, as, if you look at these videos you can see different microphones that I've used, uh, all types of things. You wonder why I'm uh, showing you my tongue? That's because I had a uh, black, hairy tongue. It's actually an illness. L luckily, not life-threatening or anything. But it was because I had been in the hospital for six days, and they had been giving me a... Uh, powerful power and expensive antibiotic for my leg infection and it oh, it wreaked havoc on my system causing black lung or not black lung that'd be <laughs> black tongue so uh, anyway I'd, I'd probably put this away but I I have a hat. I got a hat that says director on it. And I've wore the hat a couple of times, but no young females have come up to me and said, Oh, sir, are you a movie producer, director? I want to be in your production, and I'm willing to take off all my clothes and have wild 
sex with you. Didn't happen. So there was no reason for me to buy that director's hat. I guess I need a hat that says uh, financially secure or billionaire or make America great again or something. Huh? Anyway, I'm going to stop here, upload this, and hook up my Blue Yeti microphone again. Thank you very much for watching.